several under-resourced areas across our state. And so in this two-part question, part number one, what will you do to support community and economic development in under-resourced areas? Right. This is a critical question. You know, for years, you know, across Republican and Democratic administrations, I think that so much of our economic development plan, our strategy, is focused almost entirely on bringing big business in from out of states and overseas. And I think that's perfectly fine. I'll stand up and celebrate that every ribbon cutting, no matter who led to those jobs coming here. But when we focus almost solely on that strategy, we miss the fact that we have talented, industrious, courageous people in every town that have the dreams and the abilities to build scrappy small businesses. Whether they're restaurants, whether they're barber shops, whether they're lawn care companies that start out with two teenagers and a lawnmower and grow into employing dozens of people. You know, what these young entrepreneurs don't usually have is access to that first five or $10,000 of capital to start. They usually don't have access to health care while they take the risk. And they usually benefit from just 15 or 20 hours of basic training that take your odds of success from 10 or 20% to somewhere around or north of 50%. We could provide all of that and give every one of our communities, not just a handful, a chance to work hard and build from the bottom up, a chance to take some measure of control back over their economic destiny. And I think it just starts with the belief that we have these talented people in every community, and I've met them in dozens around the state. And the second part of this question is, how do you provide access to capital and incentives for smaller scale developments of small businesses in local communities? Yeah, I'd say a few things. I mean, I think first we have to make responsible choices about the revenues that we have now. You know, in the next legislative session, there's going to be a big debate over our next round of tax cuts. You know, our state newspaper, the Democrat Gazette, reports that these could cost up to $180 million a year. Is that the best investment of our money? Or could some of those funds go to providing some seed capital for entrepreneurs across the state? You know, there are also organizations that have been operating around the world for decades. They're called microfinance organizations. They're built specifically to work in the smallest towns in impoverished communities to give people that little bit of lift that they need uh, to move forward. I think that we could bring some of those here to Arkansas. They've already got proven models, and it could allow some of our uh, communities to build from the bottom up. Uh, and I think that the third thing that we need, you know, it's past time for us as a state, working hand-in-hand -hand local communities, to develop a, a strategic plan for economic development in the state. You know, we have incredible untapped resources, particularly in some of our impoverished communities. We have gorgeous natural beauty in this state. We have rich cultural history. We should bring people here from all over the country to come here and spend their tax stuff, their dollars. And when we do that, we complement that with a strategy that unleashes small business. We can really see some real progress over the next 10 years across the state. It just takes a little bit of proactive planning on our part. The second section, the 